no matter how best a business process is designed, there would always be a little variation within the process. If the variation keeps you away from meeting the deadlines, it negatively impacts the business process. In such a scenario, you will have to take necessary measures or actions that negatively impact your business. And that is exactly where control charts are beneficial for your organization. The control charts are used to identify the causes of the process and prevents manufacturing a defective product. Let's consider an example. When we consider the manufacturing industry, variation can be due to several reasons, such as material properties, improper testing techniques. Let us learn more about control charts in the coming sections. Hello everyone. This is Eric from Invensys Learning, and I welcome you all to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe to Invensys Learning, and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Before we start, let's look at the agenda for the session. We will begin with a brief introduction to control charts. Next, let us discuss about control limits, followed by benefits of control charts. Then, we will get started with process variation. Next, let us see how these control charts are beneficial for your organization. Moving on, we will talk about types of control charts. Next, we shall understand how to create a control chart. Followed by an example to create a control chart, which includes calculation of standard deviation, upper control limit, and lower control limit. So shall we begin our session on control charts. We will start with a brief introduction to control charts. A control chart is defined as the graphical representation that depicts whether the organization's products or processes meet the required specifications. The concept of control charts was introduced by Dr. Walter A. Schuhart. And these charts are sometimes known as statistical process control SPC charts or Schuhart charts. A control chart displays all the process data in a sequence. It consists of a centerline, the upper limit, and the lower limit. The centerline of the chart indicates the process chart. On the other hand, upper and lower limit lines represent whether the process is within control or out of control. Next, let us understand about control limits. The control limit is defined as the standard deviation position above and below the center line in a control chart for a process. If the plotted data points are within the control limit range, it indicates that the process is in control. On the other hand, if the points exceed the control limit, the process is out of control. The control limits are based on process variation, and above discussed lines are determined from the historical data. By comparing the data with these lines, you can conclude whether the process is in control and consistent, or out of control and unpredictable. When a control chart indicates that the process is under control, it indicates that it is stable enough, and doesn't require any changes. Next, let's understand what is upper control limit and lower control limit. The upper control limit is a value greater than the maximum value, beyond which it is considered a special cause of variation. The lower control limit is defined as a value below the center line, and any number below this point indicates the process is out of control due to special cause variation. The upper control limit and lower control limit depend on random variation in the process. The upper control limit and lower control limit form a boundary within which the quality of a business process meets the desired value. Outside these limits, the quality is considered out of control and unpredictable and requires immediate attention. Hope you are clear with the control charts definition. Now we shall understand its benefits. Here are a few important benefits of using control charts. Let's take a look at it one by one. The control chart will help you understand the variations in the business processes. First, and the most important thing to consider here is, variations within your limit indicate that the process is consistent and working properly. In contrast, variations that spike outside the control limit require your action to make the process consistent. Kindly pay attention to the pattern of the plotted points. And these patterns help you to come up with possible variations. It also helps you to come up with possible solutions. These charts will also let you know when something might go wrong, or when something is already going in the wrong phase. The chart generates new innovative ideas to improve the quality of the process. Next, let us understand about the process variation and control charts. Before creating a control chart, you must understand various types of process variation. On the other hand, comprehensive knowledge of process variation will help you understand whether your process is consistent or unpredictable. We understand that all processes vary, but do you know its type of variation? There are two types of process variations, that is, common cause variation and special cause variation. So now, let's discuss these types of variations in detail. First we let's see what is common cause variation. 
Common cause variation is represented by random points under the control limit. The image represents how common cause variation takes place. Common cause variation is termed as random cause or natural problem. And the term was coined by Hari Alpert in 1947. Although variation is considered an issue, it has become an integral part of the business process. Eventually, this variation will creep into the process, and there is nothing much you can do for it. It has become ongoing, predictable, and consistent with the process. Here, the process is under statistical control. You can't take a particular action to stop the failure from occurring repeatedly. It requires management to take action immediately as there could be no immediate process to handle and resolve the issue. If the chart contains only common cause variation, your business process is termed statistically stable. Statistically stable projects doesn't require any major change, and you can go ahead with process execution without any issues. Let us understand how to improve customer satisfaction through common cause variation. A control chart is used to monitor the time to review a loan application. Regularly, applications were reviewed. An average time to review was about 3 hours. The maximum time was about 5 hours, and the minimum time was 1 hour. This indicates that the process is in control. However, the customer requires all the applications to be reviewed in 4 hours or less. The very next day, applications were reviewed approximately in 4.25 hours. Still, the process is within the control limit. So, we can conclude that. The customer is not satisfied with the time frame. Though the process is stable, it cannot meet customer requirements. A manager must make basic changes to the business process components to bring variation in the application review time. The manager has streamlined the application review process by coordinating with the customer and their requirements. This reduces variation and makes the review process adhere to customer requirements. Next, we have a special cause variation. In special cause variation, the variation points lie beyond the control limit. The image represents how special cause variation takes place. The term special cause variation was coined by W. Edward Deming. Special cause variation refers to unexpected issues affecting the process. They are usually unpredictable, non-quantifiable, and have unusual variations. Moreover, these variations are not previously observed and are outside the historical experience. If you happen to come across these types of variations in your process, it will help you analyze what went wrong and how it can be resolved further. These variations are due to defects in the system, and they can be rectified by making necessary changes to the components, processes, and techniques. On the control chart, these variation points lie beyond the control limit. So, this issue needs to be recognized and addressed to prevent it from happening regularly. Let us consider an example of special cause variation. Consider you are working for a shipping company, and you are transporting a generator for a building renovation project. The generator was expected to arrive within two days at the construction place, but it took four days due to an unexpected delay at the highway. These random and unpredictable events can occur during a business process, in special cause variation. This section of the video will explain how control charts are helpful for your organization. Let us look at some of the important aspects. Employee retention rate. Customer survey. Budget. E-commerce portal. Let us discuss each of the above points in detail. First one we have is employee retention rate. Retaining the employees may not always give positive results for the organization. At times, giving a little turnover to the business process can do wonders for the enterprise. If the retention rate of the employees exceeds the control limit, it indicates that you may not be evaluating the employees properly. Also, you will be able to determine how to incorporate the new trend and include a greater number of resources for your organization. Next is, customer survey. If you plan to improve your business, it is vital to get customer feedback regularly. If there is any positive effect on the customers, then know about it and continue the previous way of doing the work. Contrarily, if you come across negative feedback, Know what needs to be changed, and implement it accordingly. Third one is budget. Control charts can be used to keep track of your budget monthly. If you spend more than the estimated budget, then it would be helpful for you to know whether to cut back your budget in the subsequent months. On the contrary, spending less than the estimated budget will get more room to spend in the next months. Last point in this category is the e-commerce portal. Quality control charts are used to manage the functionality and processes of an e-commerce portal. Let us consider an example to explain this scenario. An individual engaged in the online business world would go to any extent to handle their business efficiently, 
and identify the glitches on the website which can hinder the purchase making process. Thus, we can conclude by saying that, regular monitoring of the website's performance, and efficiency will help you address any issues before revenue declines. If you have already planned to embrace control charts at your organization, then you are already on your way to implementing the concept of quality control in your business operations. So now, what is your next step? We shall know about the types of control charts. Control charts typically fall into two categories. So, let us take a quick look at types of control charts. This classification is made on whether the data that is being monitored is attribute or variable. Under variable control charts, we have three subcategories. First one is X-bar control chart. Second is, R-bar control chart. Lastly, we have, S-bar control chart. Next, we have attribute control charts. Under this, we have three subcategories. U and C control chart. P control chart. And P control chart. We shall discuss on variable control chart in detail. Variable control charts are used to evaluate the process variation. When the data is in continuous form and, we use variable control charts. For example length, height, and weight. Three subcategories come under variable control charts. Let's understand each of those in detail here. First one is, X-bar control chart. X-bar control chart depicts the average set of samples. The mean value of each data set is calculated and plotted on an X-bar chart. It can also plot the nominal process mean versus actual process mean. Also, the chart determines whether the output of the process changes over the period. The graph depicts the average of the plotted points, given with upper control limit and lower control limit. Next we have our bar control chart. Our bar control chart is used when the data sizes are relatively small. For example, when the data size is less than 10. Sample data sets are recorded from a process, and for each data set smallest, and the largest data are recorded. These ranges are recorded on the control chart, wherein the central line depicts the average of all the ranges. Lastly, we have S-bar control chart in this category. The S-bar control chart applies to situations wherein many samples are recorded. This indicates standard deviation within the sample data sets. And, another benefit of using this control chart is, all the data are used to determine the variation, rather than just minimum and maximum values. Next, let's know more about attribute control charts. Attribute control charts are used to depict countable data on chart. Attributes are identified as number of defective units. There are two types of count data. Firstly, the data that arises from the pass or fail category. The second one is the data in the form of 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. And so on. Based on the type of data being stored, we can use the following control charts under this category. First one is, P-chart. P-chart is used to predict the stability of the process using count data. The sample size or the data size can vary over the duration of time. P-chart is used when there is a pass or fail indication in the sample unit inspected. Every defective item in the given set of samples is counted once. Second one is, NP-chart. Here, the subgroup data size must be consistent over the entire process duration in NP-chart. Here, numbers are plotted on the control chart rather than fractions, as it is more convenient to plot numbers than fractions. They are used to determine whether the process is predictable and stable. Last one is, U and C control charts. These charts are suitable when monitoring and controlling the data in numerical form, that is, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So, let us see this with an example. An automation specialist identifies the number of unusable samples in a bolt manufacturing industry. Then, they categorize the number of bolts rejected, and the total number of bolts inspected. However, another major difference between the U and C control charts is that the number of samples, and number of defects per sample remain constant in the C chart. On the contrary, the total number of samples varies in the U chart. So, we hope you have understood about various types of control charts till here. Do you know how to create a control chart? If not, no worries, we shall learn it here. Implementing control charts will help you distinguish between common cause variation and special cause variation. However, it requires commitment from the organization across functional boundaries. Let's take a look at the stepwise process to create a control chart. Determine appropriate data type. Determine the time. Determine the control limit. Plot the chart and identify the upper control limit and lower control limit. We shall understand each of these steps in detail in the coming slides. First one is, determine the appropriate data type. Before creating a control chart, 
The first step is to decide the type of data, that is, attribute or variable. It is always preferable to use variable data as it provides higher quality information. Once your data type is finalized, you can choose a suitable control chart. Next we have, determine the time. In the control chart, any changes to the data are measured over time. Thus, it becomes essential to have a fixed period to collect the data, and plot it over the chart. Creating a control chart regularly will help you know whether the process is reliable, or under improvement, or whether you can meet quality standards in the given time. Next is, determine control limits. The next step in the process is to create control limits. So, do you know how to calculate control limits? If not, no worries, we shall teach you how to calculate the one for your requirements. Calculate the standard deviation of the data. Now, let's understand how to calculate the upper control limit and lower control limit. Last one is, plot the chart and identify upper control limit and lower control limit. Once you have calculated upper control limit and lower control limit, the next step is to plot the data on the control chart. After plotting the data, you will see the patterns on the chart. These patterns will help you decide whether the process is in control, or out of control. When all the data points on the chart are within the control limit, the business process is predictable and in control. Thus, operating a business process within the control is an admirable goal. There is no need for major change to the process, yet you can make improvements. On the contrary, if the data points exceed the control limit, it indicates that the process is out of control and unpredictable. In such a scenario, you need to analyze what went wrong during the process and fix the issue shortly. So, are you thorough on steps involved in control chart creation? Let's understand it more comprehensively with an example. Let us consider, you are commuting to your workplace on a two-wheeler vehicle. Let us record the time duration it takes to reach your workplace from home. Every day, from the time you leave the house till you reach the workplace, calculate the amount of time it takes. Let us do this activity for 10 days. Once we have the data of 10 days, let us plot it on a control chart. Then, we can calculate the average time taken to commute to the workplace. The table below shows the data collected in 10 days. Based on the above graph, we can say that the average duration is around 29. One approximately to travel to the workplace regularly. And this data is considered as your control line. So now, you have calculated the average data. And the next step is to calculate the upper control limit and lower control limit. The upper control limit is the largest value or longest time you can expect to reach the workplace midst of common variation. Conversely, a lower control limit is the smallest time required to reach the workplace with common variation. Let's start the process by calculating the control limit. The first step is, subtract the average data from the data recorded on each day. Then square the result. The table provides the data of squared results. You have calculated the square of the results obtained. Next, find the average of the squared results. As per the above data, the average of the square results is 78.09. Now, we need to calculate the square root of the result obtained. And the square root is the standard deviation. Standard deviation is 8.84. Let's calculate the upper control limit and lower control limit. 55.62 is the longest time you can expect to reach the workplace midst of common variation. Next, let's calculate the lower control limit. 2. 52 is the smallest time required to reach the workplace midst of common variation. Here we come to the end of this video. Control charts are the initial stage to learn Lean Six Sigma related aspects. Having a thorough knowledge of control charts will help you keep the process under control. If this video has spiked your interest to learn, then you are at the right place. You can start with Invensys Learning's Lean Six Sigma courses online program and stand ahead amongst the group of professionals in this competitive era. The course provides you with all the essential skills required for the organization's growth and your professional growth. So what are you waiting for? Enroll today and become a distinguished Lean Six Sigma professional. Happy learning!